from West Coast Saw. Let me get you guys in here close. I'm going to show you what's in this box. Um, we're going to put a bunch of gear on this MS-291 and replace these little baby do baby dogs and uh, air cleaner, a uh, port for the, the muffler. You can't do a bark box on these. They just give you a little port um, but uh, and then a sticker. So that'll add a couple horsepower right there. So let me get you in here close and you guys. We got a sticker. We got a chain roller goes between the dogs. That's going to be a big deal on this little saw because slashing through the brush, that'll keep it from kicking off the chain off as bad. We got these dogs that look monstrous, but that's got a purpose. We got a muffler port. We got an air cleaner. We got some hardware. Nice job on the box, guys. This is this is clean looking. I like it. I don't do unboxing videos, but uh, you guys did good. So this is not a sponsored video. Oh, this is not a sponsored video. I bought this stuff with my own money. You guys will get the rundown. Um, pretty cool. I don't know if you guys know about Inbred Jed, but uh, they did a shirt deal. They're giving the money to his family. Um, I guess they've sold a thousand of them now. That's pretty cool. Um, and then he's doing Oregon chain now also. So I'll be uh, checking in with them and uh, probably getting some chain. Okay, guys, I am going to tear this little saw down so you guys see there turn it down a little bit too maybe so this is my favorite little saw um, I use it all the time it's not a big saw but it uh, rides on the four-wheeler good goes down in the woods for getting rid of getting rid of little junk trees and stuff so when when we bought this property all our stuff was in storage and uh, a bunch of my chainsaws got stolen and then the rest were in storage and I just ran into town and I just bought a, a saw because we had a tree, tree go down and uh, I didn't even know where my saws were at that point they were in storage so um, this thing's been used and abused it's got I don't know it's got gallons and gallons and gallons of gas through it um, this chain you'll know or uh, this bar you'll notice is pretty uh, pretty used and I run the I run the chain really tight on this saw. I run it way tighter than I normally would because for some reason this saw kicks the chain, and I don't know why. But uh, I run it really tight, and it's just a chainsaw. It'll wear out faster running the chain tight, and I don't care because uh, I don't want the chain coming off and getting me. So I do wear chaps and stuff, but I did get it on the arm one day when I was going through, and most of that's just because you're you're flailing through brush and crap trying to make trails out here and you're not using the thing to cut wood you're using the thing to whip through uh, little twigs and branches and crap so I'm gonna get this thing blown out and we're gonna tear some covers and stuff off of here and go to town on it so I don't do this all the time but when I want to cl actually clean a saw up I use WD-40 because it, it seems like it eats all the sap and crud and so drop a comment if you guys like have a better idea for uh, WD-40, but it uh, you get all this sap and stuff and it sticks really bad and obviously oil, but this stuff's kind of, it's just like a solvent. Basically. It's not even oil. People think that WD-40 is an oil. It's really more of a cleaner. So I spray everything down with that and then blow it off with the uh, compressed air and it just cleans everything up good. I don't do this all the time, but every once in a while, you know, if I'm changing a uh, chain um, or flipping the bar I'll, I'll blow the air cleaner out and I'll spray everything down on the saw blow the fins out especially when we get into the summer months it's really important to blow these things out and it just takes a second you can do this with a hundred dollar Harbor Freight air compressor or you can have a thousands of dollars 80 gallon tank it doesn't matter any kind of air compressor will blow out a saw even your leaf blower if you don't have one um, you can blow it out a little bit but and let that sit in your leaf blower if you don't have one um, you can blow it out a little bit but let that sit and we're gonna blow this thing all out So 
whenever you're blowing out your saw, put her in choke. That'll prevent a little bit more stuff from going down the intake possibly, especially if you're gonna pull your air filter off and uh, just prevent stuff from going down in there. You pop these guys out and there is already almost a hole in there. So I think we're gonna run a drill through those. Should probably read the instructions, but I feel like I can get through this. So if you look in here, those spots where the bolts are going to go, they're actually almost look like they're center punched in there. It's just molded right into it. So they did a pretty good job there. We're going to go drill these out. So we're just going to pretend that the shop isn't a total mess. I've got more projects than I know what to do with. And I got these damn birds that just came in here. And I can't seem to chase them out. So I'm going to chuck this up and go to town. You could easily do this with a cordless drill, block of wood, uh, just happen to have drill presses. That's how we do this. This little sewing machine light, cheapo deal on Amazon really works. It makes it nice when you're drilling. You can see what the heck you're doing. Two holes. Looks like we got them. So the main reason I bought the kit, it just comes with everything. You don't have to ask yourself, do you need hardware? You don't have to run to the hardware store to buy a freaking 10 cent screw. This should just come with everything. And uh, let's get in there. There we go. And these parts are all fit and perfect so far. Pretty happy with this. Just grab an 8mm and snug these down. Um, <coughs> There is a little bit of play in these, and I remember watching Gordy's video, he said that's to help you line these up and get them perfect. So once I put this pin in, we'll slide those around a little bit. Hold one side. I'm trying to do this all awkward so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. That's on there. So this gives a lot of strength to this side because we're just going into plastic. Put that guy on there. So this little spacer, they say to throw that in the trash. Don't know why they put it in the kit, but right there shows that little part. Throw it away. So we just take okay, so this little clip. If I set it just like that and I get a oh, that's the wrong one. Get a little a little socket. I can now just shoot that across the room. Where'd it go? There it is. And that's all that takes. Now, take our uh, clutch cover. And it doesn't quite fit there. So I'm going to force it in. It's not quite fitting right, so what I'm going to do Gonna loosen these guys up and remember to put these little dudes back. Those guys in there. And there, pops right on. Looks way meaner already. I like that. That's gonna really help getting in close on those trees that are crooked and uh, actually getting dogs into them. All right, onto the air cleaner. So, these parts remind me of, uh, used to play with RC cars a lot, and then it was on to build ARs and all that stuff, and get all these little baggies. So, the thing he's done is he, uh, he puts nice instructions on the back of these cards. I should probably pay attention to them and go cleaner, go quicker. Okay, let's do 
that ain't going to go in there at all, is it? Socket's too fat. Recalculating. I had to run out to the service truck and grab one of my Mac sockets that's really thin wall to get this guy out of here. There must be a super thin wall socket that the chainsaw mechanics have because I'm going to be looking for one. All right, so the only tricky thing is finding a socket thin enough to go down in those little tiny holes. Uh, my Mac socket fit if I really rammed it in there. Like I say, if you keep that down in the starting position, the cold start position, it closes the choke. Keeps you from dropping stuff down in your engine. Alright, instructions are a little confusing because this fits a bunch of different saws. I don't know where these rubber plugs go. I don't see any torque screws, but we pull that guy off and we're going to put back our nuts in there. I'm just going to put these nuts back in. And they've definitely got a uh, interference fit. They don't want these things vibrating off apparently. Run these nuts down, oil up an air filter and slap it on here. Got okay and n oil. Oh, they sell oil. I didn't think to order some, so we're just going to try this. Uh, I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on here and dry that off. And we're going to stick this guy on here. Oh, that guy fits tight. That's good. Back this off a little bit. There we go. And we just tighten the hose clamp. That seems good. Yeah, throttle, nothing, nothing interfering here. Looks like we're good to go. So I am going to throw a new plug in this guy. Gap it real quick. Just because we're here, and I also want to look at the plug. So this has been burning good. Uh, you can see that. It's got that nice uh, cardboard box color to it. That's what you want. this guy in here a little bit and that's just fine it's just foam it's just foam so as you put your cover on just look around your throttle linkage make sure no, nothing's sticking out in there that's gonna mess with that so we're all good okay on to the universal port here dump him out so he's figured out these little rev nuts, they give you a screen, give you a little tool for tightening those guys down. So the problem I have is everybody kind of puts these here and I've got that, still put this little bump here and they also put it on top and that's kind of getting a little bit close here, especially if I've got the chain brake set, which when this thing's hot and it's, uh, you know, when, the, when this saw is hot and I'm done with the cut and I shut it off, I set the chain brake. That's going to put that thing really close there. So, I'll decide where I want to put this. I don't think I can put it underneath here. It would literally be touching that plastic tank. So, I think I'm going to try and put them right there. Be a little tough, but I think we can... I think I can hammer a dent into that, hammer out that little corrugation. 
and we'll see if we can get that to work. Worst case, I'll have a dent in my muffler. I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so for this to work, I'll be banging on this a little bit. I don't really want to do that on the saw. So I'm just going to see if I can hammer this little ridge out of here. And to do that, I want to hit lots of times with a tiny little hammer. So. It's almost got it there. So these universal ports, he makes them to fit a whole bunch of different saws. Obviously he makes bark boxes to fit some of the big felling saws. And uh, these are a, kind of a thin gauge. And the reason for that is so that they can kind of be form fit to things. Got that. That's getting close. You guys can see what I'm dealing with there. I'm taking that, taking that corrugation, hammering it down to where this thing's actually fitting on there. I don't just have some big dumb exhaust gap, uh, exhaust leak. So I'm going to put this back on the saw and hammer on that a little bit more. I think we can get that a little bit better right in the back there. Muffler's back on. We're going to set this how I wanted it which is going to go right there and just going to take a sharpie and I'm going to mark these holes. I marked out these holes, drilled some pilot holes and now I've got a drill bit that's the right size for this rev nut. Doing it in the vise with the old cordless drill just because yeah, that fits nice and tight. Um, it's hard to get the right angle on the drill press. Okay, so we've got this machine screw. We got that little nut on there. I'll put this little piece on here. I want to thread that bolt in all the way in so we get into all the threads that we can. And I'm going to get that burr off. go. Oh, it's got one too. Okay. Put that guy in there. Notice we got threads that are 100% through and we're going to try and hold this Allen wrench. I'm going to let that hit there. I'm going to make sure it's 100% down in here. I actually have the right tool to be doing this with, but it's not here. Pretty snug there. We're going to give that a try. Back this all off. Oh yeah, that's, you can tell that rivet's not moving at all. So that's perfect. You just don't want to break this stuff off in there. So, okay, do another one. I'm going to put a little drop of oil on here. Won't hurt nothing. Okay, so we're all the way through there. Make sure your uh, make sure your rivet's down flat all the way. Let me do this, or it'll screw things up. 
I want to get that sitting somewhere that it's not going to rotate. Get to where you hold everybody from turning here. You can feel it when the rivet's still a little bit loose. Here we've got it. Pull that out. That was a little bit loose still. Hit him one more quarter turn here. Don't want uh, don't want the rivet nuts loose, rattling, exhaust leaking noises. Uh, we also don't want to break this little tiny screw off in here. That's tight now. Perfect. So this port being tiny makes it a little bit difficult to trace around the inside. We're gonna give her a shot here though. And that's sitting down fairly flat on there. I'm liking it. Once that screen's in behind it, it'll work just fine. I'm just going to take a pick. And I'm going to scratch around the inside of that port. And I'm going to get all the way around it. And then I might... Might even redraw that line once I pull that off here with a sharpie. We'll see how well we can see that. I think we'll be able to see that just fine. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I got a pretty good line around that. This metal is really soft. a little bit that's fine just try and keep it away from the line and so I don't have a Dremel here I got a pretty serious Dremel so we're gonna give this a shot try not terrible so if I can get some light maybe you guys can see better here now you can see where it's not perfectly flat so I'm gonna work on that a little bit here fits really good now. I got that corrugation hammered out. 
hard to tell, but you can just barely see any light there. I'll put that screen in there. That'll that'll fix that. The old dull chainsaw file, so it's not super grabby. I'm just gonna clean that burr out of there. But I'd highly recommend using a Dremel and not a great big die grinder like that, because uh, one little one little screw up and you could you could kind of end this muffler. But that came out good. I'm gonna run the screen. Obviously, a lot of guys take the screen out. I think this is a pretty big port for this little saw, so I don't think it's gonna be an issue. And if it uh, seems like it's plugging up, we'll just take it out. Not a big deal. So I'm gonna blow this muffler out. Put a little blue Loctite. All right, those are tight, Loctited. And I'm gonna put a dot on these guys too. Get them started in here. There's a plate behind the muffler that it's kind of got to be sitting right. Oh, come on, find your hole. There he is. All right. That's still got a, that's got a quarter inch gap. So that's going to be just fine. When it's running, it's back there. You got a little over a half inch. Um, it's either going to be fine or it's going to melt this, and I don't think it's going to be a problem. This whole bar is ugly looking. Okay. some bar nuts now. So like I said, I run the chain on this one a little bit tight and uh, it doesn't seem to jump off anymore. Time for some gas and oil. We'll get to fire this thing up. We're gonna run this a little bit and probably richen up the main jet just for the heck of it so we don't run it lean. And then we'll go out and tune it a little bit. All right, sticker's gotta be worth a few horsepower, right? Find a spot on this saw where it would actually sit, right? All right, there it is. Looks pretty mean with those dogs on it. Let's see how it runs. All right, let's give this a fire. Maybe a little bit lean on the bottom, but we'll get it in the wood and uh, we'll know for sure.
take her outside and tune her a little bit. That'll be in the next video. Got a lot of a lot of cutting to do, but uh, we'll do another video of this thing. I'm pretty impressed. It's really really good quality stuff. I'm I'm happy with it. So good job, guys, over at uh, West Coast Saw, and we'll do a video of this thing in the wood pretty quick here. I'll get it tuned. I think I'm a little bit lean everywhere. Don't want to push that. I'm not getting any four stroke at all revving it in here. So. Uh, with that, I got a couple more of these saws to build. I got a 461 that's ported and a 460. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the suspension kit, everything on those. And we'll be playing around with those saws next. I got some falling to do and I'm going to get the big saws tuned up and play with them. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.